Welcome to Ask Between the Keyframes on Motionographer. We are not live. Not <laughs> but we... we're back. <laughs> yeah, but we're back. That's not how we do things. Yeah. Uh, welcome, welcome. We have another exciting question for Ask the Keyframes on Motionographer. And we have a question from Kelsey Gloria, who's actually one of my alums from SCAD. So what's up, Kelsey? And Kelsey asks, she's a producer, and her question is, what are your suggestions or recommendations on how to build a portfolio for a producer? I think this is kind of simple. It's very similar to uh, a designer portfolio, put the work you're most proud of, um, and say what you did and what was interesting about the job. Now, a producer portfolio might be more geared toward showing diversity and range of work, handling maybe multiple spots or multiple deliverables or tiered clients, direct to client. Um, you might wanna show a display of category work, like is it packages, is it auto, is it tech, is it this? So I, I like to think about more of a producer portfolio of looking at it and seeing how challenging the clients might be and um, how maybe risky the, the job itself was, like, was it a big ask? Did it have CG and live action? Like, what components? And then I like to see how they show a credit list and talk about the job. You know, how you, it's not just a producer reel of like showing a spot, it's saying like, this was an interesting job or a challenging job, although you might not want to use that word, like, because, you know? So I think that that's a cool part of it. When somebody applies, let's say I'm a producer and I want to apply to work with you, what are you expecting to see? Well, I'm hoping to see some motion design work to start on their reel. So um, maybe so a demo of, reel. Yeah, producer. Well, it doesn't have to be a demo reel. I think in this case it okay. can be spots. So it can be like a run list of the work that they are most proud that they've produced. Um, I think, you know, a lovely introduction letter and a resume are really important for a producer to show you where you worked, how big was, so I can get a sense of like how big was the studio, what was like the reporting structure, maybe they're moving from editorial into graphics. So there's going to be a pivot there. It's not the same thing. Bidding graphics jobs or motion design jobs is certainly different than bidding editorial. Same thing with visual effects and CG. So there's going to be a learning curve there. Um, so it's just really important to see what they're their background is um, and in what right capacity they produce the work. So I'm a producer. I send you, I send you some spots, mm -hmm. an intro letter, talk about some of the things, why I, I want to work with you. Yeah. I pass the threshold of, okay, let's talk. Let's talk mm -hmm. to this person. What's, what's the next step look like an interview of some kind? Yeah. It's usually just a, a call a zoom now, or if they're local, they can come by the studio. You really want to get a personality read on them. Um, and we'll do some back channeling and see if we have mutual people in common. So that's why it's nice if you leave a breadcrumb trail for us, <laughs> you know, um, you know, just get a sense. And then, you know, we love when we can hire somebody freelance for a little bit. But, you know, if somebody's pivoting out of a full time job to another full time job, like it's really important that they say that so that you understand confidentiality is important um, when you're kind of slipping out who they are and what they're about. I, it's not so much the questions we ask them, it's the questions they ask us. Interesting. So we get a sense of who they are and the experience they have. Yeah, like come prepared with questions. What kind of jobs are, do you have in-house right now? Um, how many would I be assigned? How would you ease me into the role? Like questions like that, you know, um, how long do people tend to stay with your company? You know, as a producer, I'm not necessarily interested in being executive producer, but is there room to grow? What does that look like? All those kinds of questions. How, how big is your team? What's it like staffing a team? What do your freelancer resources look like? All of those kind of questions show that you have experience and you know where the challenges lie. And you want to know how we handle that. And then we get a sense if you have not just the questions, but like, Oh, this person might have an understanding of this that helps us evolve that process a little bit. Do you expect a producer to have a, a database, a roster of freelance 
talent and contacts, people that they can they can yeah, call in. So I think think about more like creative directors and creative leads having that depth okay. of resource um, in terms of talent. When it comes to a producer, it's a different kind of depth of talent and resource. It's not just artists. It's really if they're like a problem solver on their feet. Like, oh, I know how to find a line producer if I need one. Oh, I know how to find a PA if I need to do that. If I, there's all these clients in the office and we got to put something together that they're going to be able to like think on their feet and make it happen, you know? Right. So right. it is nice. We don't, we certainly don't expect um, producers to come with clients. I did an interview with, with a longtime producer, one of my mm-hmm. early mentors, Boo, Boo Wong. She said, I feel that the best producers have a deep respect for the people on the team and the art. Otherwise, go work in a different industry. Yeah. And, you know, and, and just to paraphrase some of the things she said, it was this idea of that, you know, the, the producer is really the, in some ways, the cheerleader for the team mm-hmm. and really just helping to move everything forward. And she had a great uh, description of like a swan. You know, you see the swan, it looks like it's elegantly gliding, but underneath the water, it's <laughs> pedaling like super hard. Right. And, and which made me think it's almost like a, a good producer is like good typography. It, yeah. it, it just generally it. functions yeah. yeah it does its job and you know unless you're really you know savvy you're you don't even necessarily notice right mm-hmm. it's just doing what it's doing and then but the bad type really stands out so a producer who's not keeping keeping it calm or just stressing and pushing yeah. that out like that that affects the whole production the whole project so oh one last thing i'll, I'll ask and maybe add to mm-hmm. is the idea of what about somebody who's going from the creative side to the producing side? Well, I think they have to realize they're somewhat starting over. (laughs) You know, I do think uh, people that study motion design and design in general will make great producers, could make great producers, but it is a different thing going from like making the thing to managing the thing and to managing expectations. So you have to realize like, oh, I'm pivoting over into something kind of completely different. But if you are looking to make that pivot, talk to whomever is at the studio you are at and say, look, I'm thinking about pivoting. Would you be open to that? And they might be, you know, you never know. So hopefully there's space for that. Okay, cool. well, I think that covers it. I do think of uh, uh, keeping your LinkedIn portfolio, LinkedIn database is really, your LinkedIn page really up to date is important. I think a website, but like using it um, kind of smartly to feature your challenging jobs or just diversity of jobs. Um, yeah, it's to show range and that you're adaptable. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.